So there it is. I want to stress um, before I read out any of the comments that have come into the programme that last week it was a very warm and friendly space, my inbox during PMQs. There was a lot of uh, comment about the maturity of... Uh, it wasn't last week, was it? It was the week before. Anyway, Rishi Sunak's last outing as... as um, leader of the opposition. And and I, and I mention that because it, it, it proves that the people who message me at, uh, between 12 o'clock and 20 past on a, on a Wednesday when PMQs is underway are, as ever, uh, a multiplicity of perspectives. Um, I found one nice comment about Cammy Badenoch so far in my inbox, and that, that was from Michael, who, who said, well, I don't know why he said I hate to say it, but I Bad or not, did a good job. Clear voice and some good points made. Eight out of ten for me. Before I read you some of the other comments that have come in since 12 o'clock, let's turn to LBC's political editor, Natasha Clark. Can we begin with the defence? Two things occurred to me listening to that. Cammy Bad or not accused Keir Starmer of not knowing what was in Rachel Reeves's budget. And then unless I've lost the plot completely, brackets again, brackets, <laughs> unless I've lost the plot completely... She missed the bit in the budget when Rachel Reeves did talk about defence. Yeah, I think she missed the bit where he and uh, she announced rather another two point nine billion pounds worth of cash for for defence and and talked about the defence review that we know is coming in a couple of months' time. So maybe she hasn't read the budget as quite as as uh, as forensically as as she should. But it's it's a bit bold to go in on your first PMQs with with such a take uh, mm. to accuse him of of being of being wrong on this and not mentioning something. Um, it feels a bit like an oversight. It feels a bit sloppy. Um, she made some good points, but I think she made them really poorly. Um, I think that it's fair enough if she wanted to go on Keir Starmer and his top teams comments about Donald Trump, about what they've said in the past. That's completely fair political capital to go on. Keir Starmer, I think, reacted incredibly well to that. Um, that was statesmanlike. That was statesman versus undergraduate. I mean, I'm not suggesting for a minute that this will still be true six months from now, but if mm. I was advising Kemi Badenoch, I'd be certain of two things. Number one, she's going to completely ignore me because she doesn't take advice from anybody. And number two, she really needs to, to, to work out how she's going to deal with a statesman on the other side mm -hmm. of the dispatch box as opposed to a sort of student union rival. I totally agree with you on student, student union politics. That's exactly how she came across uh, to me uh, as well. And, you know, talking about scripted remarks, Prime Minister's questions is half scripted remarks. And she of read course some it of is. her she, own she read well, her own. which is just bizarre. It is. I don't, think, I don't think that went down too well. I'm still just baffled that she went on Donald Trump. He is not popular in the United Kingdom. 18% mm. of people, according to a poll from a couple of weeks ago, wanted Trump to win. Why on earth? I'm not quite sure you would, you would go in like that. I think they're all listening to my show today. But I, well, if, I, I would suggest that she's really at her most confident when she's doing culture wars. Mm. So in some ways, this was an open goal, culture war-wise, with which to go after Starmer. But it was wrong for a whole heap of other reasons, mm. not least that Starmer, if he wanted to get engaged in the student union politics, could turn around and say, well... My top team have spoken very negatively about Donald Trump, but not as negatively as Donald Trump's top team. So I'm not quite sure what yeah. point it is that the leader of the opposition is making. Yeah. And, it, you know, I think she was much stronger as she went on to the budget talk mm. when she was talking about farmers, when she was talking about the labor, but branding it Labour's family farming tax. And that felt a little bit more on safer ground for her. And I felt like she sort of started to pull it back. Um, but, you know, I totally agree with Ed Davey for once from Prime Minister's yes. Questions and going on two things which I think were really, really well-made points about Russia and what the impact of Donald Trump coming back to the White House means for Ukraine, means for that war there. Um, and his comments about trade wars, his comments about tariffs, bringing it back to the cost of living. These are things that I think will resonate with people. I don't think people are going to potentially remember those comments that David Lammy made about Trump being a, a neo-Nazi, a sociopath, all of that. that I could say it's political capital that she's welcome to make. I think she is fair to make them. I don't think she made them in the strongest way. No, and I repeat again, if his own national security advisor, former vice president, chief of staff in the White House and military chiefs kind of agree with Lammy's analysis, then there's not going to be a lot of road mm. with which for... For 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 Cammy Badenoch to, to to revisit it, um, unless of course she's doing what Robert Jenrick did during the leadership election and and thinking first of the 
people that lean towards reform as opposed to people that she needs to tempt back into the Tory fold. Well, that's potentially why she's done this and why she's gone on this today. And of course, we know that Nigel Farage is going to be a real thorn in Keir Starmer's side from now on because well, of the Kemi relationship. Badenoch, yeah, because of the relationship that he already has with uh, with Donald Trump and with Donald Trump's top team. So that's going to be really difficult for I think Keir Starmer to navigate. I think uh, you know Kemi Badenoch will be right to anticipate where that's going. But it didn't feel like today was the day to to, to sort of talk about this. And it didn't feel quite right for her sort of to go in. I think his response saying, look, today's a day which we're going to work together on a range of issues. Keir Starmer is ever the pragmatist, ever the sort of, you know. Well, that's that's a really interesting point. It's also just while we're on the culture war stuff, you could quote Boris Johnson talking about Donald Trump to almost as much effect as you could quote David Lammy. But yeah, and, and, and anyone on half the Conservative Party privately will, and, and, and many publicly will, will say the same thing about Donald Trump. He, so you so know, an odd gambit, an odd gambit, but... It highlights, and I, I don't know that I agree with you much about Farage having a particular role to play because you can be Donald Trump's sworn enemy on a Monday as Elon Musk was and his best friend by Friday. So that perhaps explains why the the, the, the warm words have been issued, as, as Arthur Snell suggested to us a little bit earlier, perhaps a little prematurely, certainly a little earlier than convention. But this is the interesting thing because Starmer and his team are in charge of navigating Trump's caprices, Mm -hmm. whether it's tariffs or trade wars. A few people pointing out to me that it's a bit rich of Badenoch to talk about trade deals when she's demonstrated her failure to understand the difference between a trade deal and a meaningless memo of understanding. But again, we can park that for another day. Um, Starmer's got, this is a bit of a nightmare to, to, to be dealing with a rat in a sack but a rat in a sack who has quite a lot of influence and power over your own country. I, I mean, America is not our biggest trade partner. That's the European Union. Again, something else I think Badenoch got wrong, unless she's splitting she, yeah, the European Union Yeah, not sure she said the word country. We're not sure she said the word countries. trade block. But, um, but, but Starmer can't. And nor can Lammy come out and say what they really think about this man because they have to do business That's with called him. being in government. That's just is, they, you've it? got to suck it up and, and, yeah. and realise that this is the way to do grown-up politics. But they do. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I don't think anybody really grudges that from, from Keir Starmer and his team. And, and actually, like, speaking to people in, in Downing Street, speaking to people in the Foreign Office for, uh, over the last sort of few weeks, and many, I think, people... Many people weren't quite ready for the idea of a a Trump victory, but it was there in the back of people's minds that this could happen. But with Donald Trump, there's a lot of talk, but does he walk the walk? And they're not quite sure that he's going to go as far on NATO as he says, is going to be pushing for a peace deal in Ukraine, is going going to be quite as bad as as they think. Just look, I mean, obviously, look, I'm not saying that four years of Donald Trump didn't didn't cause some chaos. Of course it did. But did Donald Trump do all of the things that he says he's going to do in an election campaign? Donald Trump campaigning is totally different to Donald, Donald Trump, Trump in office. In, in office, um, except for the bits that Vladimir Putin wants, I think we shall. Yeah, and that's gonna, that's going to be a, that's going to be a really Davies dangerous thing to, to watch for. The most intelligent. Well, look, a quick roundup of messages that have come in, and if you want to balance it, um, then you've got time to do so. Eight four eight five zero is the uh, number you need to. To leaven this particular feast. So um, Shan kicks things off. This, this is just starting from roughly when Kemi Badenoch got to her feet. Real-time commentary from LBC listeners. This isn't the slam dunk she thinks it is. Wow, she's really sucking up to Trump. Is Kemi Badenoch the new leader of the opposition or Trump's ambassador to the UK? Liam is my favourite so far. She's making a real muck mess of this. Like that, like that a lot. <laughs> he literally just said he would make that defence commitment. Ben noticed that. Kemi didn't. Bloody hell, writes Becky. Is she OK? Did someone upset? her this morning that's her default position i think the, the, yeah. the, 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 um is she really the best the tourists could find badenoch is a total can i say that word weapon i think i can i have now graceless charmless no sense of irony badenoch reading scripted questions about scripted answers risible hypocrisy interesting that kemi badenoch should ask questions about trade deals there is evidence that she does not know the difference between trade deals and memorandums of understanding keith in poland there a man after my own heart uh, I feel like I've just watched one of those cartoons where one character holds the head of the opponent and the opponent just punches thin air. Uh, Badenoch couldn't land, land a single line on Starmer. He literally just did make a commitment to 2.5% defence spending. Uh, ha- have, hate to say Badenoch did a good job. Clear voice and some good points made for me. What an absolute embarrassment. Anyone watching outside the UK will think we are a joke after Badenoch's performance. I can't ca- I, 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 I've got to stop now because there's so many. But we leave it with this one. Didn't the Tories say that they voted 
voted for Badenoch because she would be good at PMQs. Does this mean that we're about to have another Tory leadership oh, race God, soon? Please, please, no. We've had a five-month one. I'm just really not ready for that anytime soon. But look, she's, she was still smiling when the cameras cut away for her. She's going to feel that that went well. Bless her. Quick word on how hard it is to get rid of her now, which is considerably harder than considerably, it was last week. Considerably harder. 15% of the Tory party were previously needed to, to submit a letter of no confidence. Now it's going to be a third of the party. And obviously that's because of the changing makeup of the Conservative Party. They're a much smaller organisation than before. But it does mean that if and when Kemi Bader not gets into trouble, if and when they start to see that she's not winning those by-elections, Conservative seats and really making inroads in the polls. If that doesn't happen, they're going to find it a lot harder to get rid of her than they did before. 